There are other teams yeah. that are undefeated mm-hmm. that make you go, wait, really? Yeah. They're undefeated? So I found six of them that really kind of caught my eye as far as being undefeated, uh, surprisingly. Right. First of all, yeah. down the coastal bend, Corpus Christi Ray. Do you know yeah, Corpus man. Christi Ray is undefeated? I did only because I read Matt Stepp's 10 thoughts from him each week. Four Shameless and plug o, right there. Yeah. Four and O. Oh, the Texans are four and O. Oh, they were we picked them eighth. In 35A, out of yeah. 11 teams. Yeah. Eighth. And they are 4-0. Yeah. and oh. Quarterback Brad Bra- Breckenridge has been fantastic. Uh, a sophomore, I believe. Their running back, Joshua Alvarez, has been great as well. The The Texans look like they want to crash the party in District 35A. Things are only going to get tougher. Right. Because that's a huge dis- the 11-team district. They're going to go with two pods and all that fun stuff. But right now, Texans off to a great start. I don't know what's going on in our office, but... Uh, Give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing an internet show! <laughs> I wonder if the mics could pick up the sorry from our boss sheepishly running down the hall. Seminole! <laughs> Seminole is 3-0. and Yeah. Uh, we picked them 6th in District 2-4A Division 2. They went 1-9 and nine last year. So they've yeah. already tripled their win total from last year. Right. They got wins over Idaloo, who, again, they're bigger than, but still. Still. They got a win over Lubbock, yeah. who they are smaller than. Um, they are allowing seven points per game Pretty defensively. Good. Pretty good Seminole defense. Seminole is off to a 3-0 and start. Yeah. De Leon. Yes. This is surprising. Yes. De Leon in the Central Texas area, in District 7 to a Division 1, if you had told me that Goldthwaite was undefeated. Right. Okay, that's, that's fine. If you told me that Crawford was undefeated. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. Heiko. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. De Leon. Yeah. De Leon, we picked them fourth in seven two two A Division One. Yeah. Uh, their quarterback or their quarterback Kevin Yeager is coach uh, coach David Yeager's kid. He's been lighting it up and their defense has allowed twelve points in four games. Not bad. De Leon Not off to a great start. Bad. Yes. Yeah. Out west. We talked so much about San Angelo Central, but what a year for San Angelo. Yeah. Central's off to a great start. Yeah. Again, another team that I don't think we're surprised that they're undefeated. Right. I right. think we may be surprised that they're undefeated in the fashion that they right. are. They're dominating. And how yes. good they've yes. looked. Yeah. But we're not surprised that they're right. undefeated. San Angelo Grape Creek, though? Right. We're undefeated. Yeah. Another team that was 2-8 and eight last year. 2-8. Yeah. and eight. They are now 3-0 and oh on the year. We picked them third in their district in 2-3A Division I. Uh, and they are led, what's what's interesting about Grape Creek is that they are led by two juniors. Mm-hmm. Their junior dual threat quarterback, Austin Barron, has been fantastic. And then their junior running back, Austin Ortegon, has been great as, re- great as well. Grape Creek, off to a 3-0 start, already increased their win total from last year, just three games in. Very impressive. And then two bigger schools. One down in the, in the greater Houston area. So, last week, we talked about Crosby and their loss. Mm-hmm. Um... But there's a team in their district that I think people may be sleeping on and may not realize is undefeated. Splendora is 3-0. and Okay, they've already matched their win total from last year. We had them 8th in 21-5A. I blame you. Yeah, well, that's fine. 8th <laughs> in 21-5A. Everyone else does. And for me, look, if you win, if you win two non-district games... I think, there's a, I think most teams can win two non-district games. If you schedule it right... You can be like, oh, we're just better than them. You know, we're we're going to schedule teams that we can beat. Right. But then last week, they beat Dayton. Right. Good a, program. A, a good program, a, a playoff team in that district. They beat Dayton. And their junior running back, Evan Nichols, is putting up stupid numbers. 249 yards on the ground per game. 10 yards a carry. This kid's been out of control. This junior running back, Evan Nichols. Watch out for Splendora. Like, if that... If that district, if 21-5A is going to kind of, if the top's going to kind of rise, mm-hmm. or the top's going to kind of fall, and the bottom's going to kind of rise, watch out for Splendora to maybe sneak yeah. into a playoff spot, yeah. because that would be really impressive for the Wildcats. And then down in the down in the Rio Grande Valley. Wouldn't, wouldn't have been surprised if he came to me and said, hey, Harlingen's going to be undefeated. Right. It's Harlingen. They're awesome. What about Harlingen South? Hey, wait, what? 3-0. and oh, Pick them to be... Th- Sixth in 32-6A. And one of the reasons we did not think a whole lot of them, A, they're a, a relatively young program. Right. And B, they have a new coach in Brian Ricci, who was the George Ranch offensive coordinator. He was George Ranch's offensive coordinator last year. And that is very much not in the vein of how Valley teams do business. Right. Generally speaking, the Valley has about, to put it, they have this amount of coaches. Yeah. 
and their assistants and head coaches, and yeah. then like one of these opens, and so they move it right. around. It's the same kind of. It's the same guys. Right. It's the same guys that yeah. that generally yeah. you hire an offensive coordinator from Los Fresnos, or right. you hire a defensive coordinator from uh, San Benito. Right. That's what you do. Right. What you don't do is you go to the Houston area and say, "Hey, you yeah. offensive coordinator from a state champion team, right? Come be our head coach yeah. at a young program yeah. at Harlingen." Yeah. And he did. And they are averaging in very, not uh, unsurprisingly, for anybody who watched George Rantz last year, no. they're, they're averaging 300 yards per game on the ground. Yeah. Okay? The running back, Adrian Torres, quarterback, Brandon Villarreal, they have been off to a fantastic start. 3-0. and And 32-6A, again, another another example of a district that maybe the top is not as yeah. elite as we thought it was. Right. And if they, if they slip, yeah. then all of a sudden, I think a playoff spot or two opens up, and maybe Harlingen, Harlingen South, rather, can sneak into the playoffs. And it may not seem like much. You could look at these records and go, well, they haven't beat that many good teams or any of that stuff. But, I mean, I think the perfect thing to point to is, you know, this time last year, Frisco Lone Star was not a team we expected to make mm-hmm. a state championship. 4-0 at this point. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you know, the the teams they beat, not necessarily the, the cream of the crop, but it was a our first sort of harbinger. You know, things to come. What's the name of the game, Max? The name of the game is winning. Winning. The name of the game yeah. is winning, and these teams are doing it in, yeah. in kind of surprising fashion. Yeah. So uh, they are off to great starts. And, and the other thing is with three games, if it were two games or one game. It's too soon. That's right. too soon. Right. But three games, I don't think you can luck into three wins. Yeah. I really don't think and you especially can. especially four. Exactly. You know, and some of so. these teams, exactly. When you look at Corpus Christi, Ray, or De Leon, right. uh, you know, who are four now, I definitely don't think you can right. look into them. So. 